Today, I'll walk you through how to access and use the Performance Insights dashboard. To access Performance Insights, click on Instances in the top left. What I want to bring your attention to is a new column called Current Activity. In this case, we have one database with high load. Part of that load is in the red state, so let's click on that bar and it'll take us to the Performance Insights dashboard. The Performance Insights dashboard is divided in two parts. The top part shows a load on the database over time. And the bottom half shows the top SQL ranked by the amount of load they're putting on the database. And in this case, we can see that some load has spiked up in the past few minutes. And it says color yellow. Now what is yellow? We can look at the legend to the right. And I see yellow is CPU. So it looks like we're having CPU starvation. Now how do I identify the bottleneck? We well, identify the bottleneck by looking at this dashed black line. And that represents the number of cores on the machine. We can only have as many sessions running on the database as there are cores on the machine. And if the load goes above the dashed black line, the number of cores, then we know that we're waiting for something. Now that could be CPU, or it could be other resources, such as locks, I.O., commit rights, or others. Now where is that load coming from? We can look at the top SQL on the bottom. And in this case, our load saturation is coming from CPU. So we want to find the SQL statements that are consuming the CPU. In this case, the only one that looks like it's consuming much CPU is the third line down, all in yellow. It's a select foo 3. Now I know as a DBA that it'd be worth my while to spend a day tuning that SQL statement, in this case it's a procedure, to cut down on the amount of CPU it's using and eliminate the CPU saturation on this instance. Now I can zoom out to larger time frames. If I click on 6H, that's six hours. And in this case, I see that there are spikes earlier. Now I can select a spike by clicking my mouse and dragging across the spike. And now I'll zoom into that load period. And in this case, I no longer see CPU saturation. I see some other weight event. So we're waiting for something. Now I can look into the legend and I see the top weight event, blue, is IO colon XACT sync. Now we can look up the definitions for this weight event. And it turns out this weight event is waiting for writing changes to the database to stable storage. Now what SQL statements are waiting for this. I look in the top SQL and I see the first two statements are the ones spending almost all the time waiting for this. Now what are those SQL statements? Those are insert statements, which makes sense because we're waiting for changes to be written out to stable storage. In this case I see that the insert statements are inserting, the first one inserts one row into the table at a time. And what happens is by default we have implicit commits. So after every insert statement we have to wait for a commit and guaranteeing the changes are written to disk. Now if I want to optimize my application, now if I want to optimize the application, what I could do is have insert statements that do many rows in one single insert statement. Now we can look at the data with other dimensions. So by default it's weights on top and top SQL on the bottom. But on the bottom I can also choose to look at the top weights, which is the first one, and see which weights I've spent the most time on. We've already seen SQL. I can also see it by hosts. And in this case, I have two hosts, and I can see that the load is well bounced across those hosts. Now, if I had an application server that might have had the wrong version of the code on it, it might be taking up higher load. And I can see immediately across my application fleet if any of those instances are generating higher load on my database. I can also click on users and see which users are putting the most load on the database. In this case, my application is running all as one single user. We've looked at the top table in the on the bottom half of the dashboard by different dimensions. We can also use those same dimensions on the load chart on the top. So if you look at the legend, to the top right of the legend, there's a line that says slice by. By default, it's weights. I can click on it, see other dimensions I can group by. So I can, instead of weights, choose SQL. Now the load on the database is exactly the same in the chart. What we're changing is the stacked colored areas. So the stack colored areas were weights, and now they're SQL. So I can see the load by SQL over time. So for example, those SQL waiting for the writes to stable storage were not steady state. They came and went. Whereas some other SQL statements had a very stable load on the database. I can also do it by hosts. Now we saw that we have two hosts that look like they were putting on similar load onto the instance. In this case, we can see one host had a steady state and another host put on a heavier load during a certain period of time. And finally, we can see the load by users over time. In this case, we just have one single user. 
So we've seen how Performance Insights makes it easy to see the load on an RDS database and to both identify when there are bottlenecks and where to act if there is a bottleneck. Thank you for watching.